the sexual assault victims suing Uber notch a legal victory in their long battle. If something like this has happened to you, whether you're the driver or the rider, uh, make sure you go to giglawyers.com. Um, send us the information so that we can put you together with an attorney. Right, so let's jump in here. This is real, folks. A lot of the stories are swept under the carpet. They have to sadly been told. Uh, here it says hundreds of women have filed lawsuit against Uber, alleging the company hasn't done enough to protect passengers from sexual assault. So that's the passengers. But the, the real numbers, and unfortunately we don't see these numbers because Uber hides them. The real numbers are with female drivers and male drivers, predominantly female drivers being hit on and assaulted by drunk men. Right, and I've had many of these conversations and phone calls with these women that are brave enough to tell their story. Um, I will make sure you get the best representation. I work with the best class action attorneys around the country. Um, again, I, I feel like it's more one-sided show. Passengers going after drivers. At the end of the day, they're really going after Uber uh, in these class action suits. But my approach is here is to represent all the drivers that have been assaulted and sexually assaulted by passengers. Way, way bigger in numbers. It's just we don't know those real numbers because they hide the numbers and they sweep them under the carpet. And many a times the police don't even take reports, right? Go directly to the attorneys. So um, now a panel of judges has ruled that about 80 of those cases can be joined together in federal court. They're far, far higher, ladies and gentlemen, far higher than 80. All of the pre-trial matters will be heard under Judge Charles Breyer in the Northern District of California. That includes witness and expert depositions and document discovery. This is a big deal because those documents are going to help show. We believe that the sexual assault problem from drivers to riders is a massive problem, says Brett Stan, the attorney for Texas firm. Kirk Garcia, who's representing several of the victims, right? So <clears throat> I don't work with these guys. I don't know how good they are, but I can tell you I work with Potter Handy. They are representing the drivers going after the, the passengers. Um, so mark my words, you have a good case and take it right there. Uh, what I also do is jump into a story here where it says passenger arrested, right? Passenger arrested charged with touching a lift driver female driver inappropriately and that was in duluth so we'll go into that story there um the only reason why that story got out is because the driver went to the media most of the time a female or a male driver goes to the police they don't even report it it does not make a very very small percentage of these cases make it into the uber and lyft statistics they don't want to talk about this problem because they know there are massive massive lawsuits looming we are going to go after them hard and heavy. I will promise you that, dear driver. Whether you're female or male, we are going to, and let me repeat this, we're going to go after them hard and heavy for the money. They will pay. I will make sure that with the attorneys I work with, they will pay and these drivers receive money. The incident cited in the lawsuit span from alleged uh, groping to kidnapping to rape uh, while Uber drivers have also allegedly been victims of sexual assault, allegedly, right? Allegedly, bullshit. So you can already right tell right now that these attorneys are a lot of trash. Those victims allege that Uber has the capacity to make rides safer, but its, but its response to these incidents has been slow and inadequate. They claim Uber does substandard background checks and doesn't always remove drivers after these um, sexual assault allegations are filed. They add that Uber could do more to make the platform safer, like fingerprint, background checks, and dash cam recordings of every ride. Now, whether the case is filed uh, for, you know, passengers on drivers or drivers on passengers, um, the bottom line is, is that the, 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 the safety procedures will eventually tighten up because judges get to rule on this, right? Okay, so, and, and, and Uber and Lyft will have to put proposals forward on how they're going to um, slow down these assaults. When growth is the ultimate, 
goal and top line revenue is the ultimate goal. I think that despite what they know, they're picking profits over people. Um, so they have dozen of sexual assault clients. Uh, they are tried and true methods to making this truly safer alternative as opposed to a magnet for predators. Uber spokesman Gabriela Condasso Caseda wrote in an email to NPR that sexual assault is a horrific crime and we take every report of this nature very seriously. While we cannot comment on pending litigation, we are deeply committed to the safety of all users on the platform and that is bullshit, they know that. Uber has been sued countless times over the past several years by passengers who allege they were sexually assaulted while using the app, but this is the first time a federal judge will be able to make decisions for all of these cases and streamline the proceedings. A consolidated lawsuit has been filed against Uber in California, but it's for victims only in that state and Lyft has faced similar combined lawsuits. Now, so these guys are only doing this in California. Um, the people that I work with are doing this nationwide. You know, it, it's not just California drivers that should collect. It's not just drivers that have been sexually harassed in California that should be able to get money, right? Every driver that has been assaulted or sexually assaulted by a passenger. And mark my words, those numbers are far, 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 far higher than these 80 that they are talking about. Uber's tried to stop the consolidation of these cases in several filings for motions to dismiss. The company argues that it did not owe a duty to plaintiff to protect the criminal conduct. And these lawsuits have little in common. After news reports in 2018, revealed that more than 100 women had been sexually assaulted during Uber rides, Uber began to focus more on ride safety. It introduced several in-app features like the 911 button, bullshit, too late, doesn't work, right? And way for friends or family members to monitor rides in real time. Not gonna help them. It also produced its ev uh, first ever safety report that tallied data on alleged sexual assaults during, those, during its rides. Now that tally data is flawed, majorly flawed. It's only a small, small percentage. Data from its latest safety report in 2020 and its previous report in 2018 shows there were 9,805 reports of sexual assaults in its rides from 2017 to 2020, which included 852 reports of rape. The case against Uber could grow as more victims file federal lawsuits against the company and are able to join the coordinated proceeding. Now, my message to drivers, if this is your intent, if this is why you got on the platform, get out. Right? Trash like you that intends to assault or sexually assault because you're a driver and you feel powerful, maybe the ride is intoxicated, get out of the game. You don't belong in the game, right? But what, what really hasn't been reported here, and this is why I'm pushing, you know, with uh, giglawyers.com is the fact that, um, is the fact that too many of these cases against drivers, assault against drivers are not reported. So we're gonna make sure it is reported, right? Um, so cases are being filed every day, including by our firm. Um, so we ex expect the number to be in the thousands, that's true. So here in this story, uh, passenger arrested, charged with touching Lyft driver inappropriately, uh, a Metro Atlanta man has been arrested and charged with sexual battery while he was riding in a lift. Duluth police arrested 25-year-old Antonio Cartagena on Tuesday after they said he touched a lift driver inappropriately. While at the intersection of Pleasant Hill Road and North Berkeley, Lake Road, Cartagena was in the rear seat passenger allegedly reached up to the 55-year-old driver and started groping her. The driver then turned around seeing that Cartagena was partially nude and engaging in lewd acts. Uh, Cartagena got out of the car and ran away before officers arrived. Cartagena was charged with sexual battery and public indecency. Police said detectives played a pivotal role in identifying the suspect. Safety is fundamental to Lyft. The behavior described is reprehensible and has no place in the Lyft community anywhere or anywhere in society. We permanently banned the individual from Lyft platform and we've reached out to the driver to offer our support. Lyft will get sued over this right um, i will make 100 percent sure that drivers get represented here the link is below my friends don't be afraid step forward 
share your story. As uncomfortable as it is, we got to share these stories and we got to get Uber and Lyft, not to only pay, but to increase safety for all drivers. Thank you and your comments, please.